Brilliance Audio presents Captivated by You by Sylvia Day Performed by Jill Redfield and Jeremy York Angel The impact of Gideon's voice on my senses was as hard-hitting as it had been the first time I'd heard it. Cultured yet smoky with sensuality, it knocked me for a loop both in the darkness of my bedroom and over the phone, where I couldn't be distracted by that incomparably gorgeous face of his. Hi. I slid my swivel chair a little closer to my desk. Is it a bad time? If you need me, I'm here. Something in his voice didn't hit me right. I can call back later. Ava? The authoritative bite when he said my name had my toes flexing in my nude slingback Louboutins. Say what you need. You, I almost said, which was more than a little insane considering he'd just fucked my brains out only a couple hours before. After he'd fucked my brains out damn near all night long. Instead, I told him, I need a favor. I'll enjoy the payback. Some of the tension left my shoulders. He'd hurt me by mentioning Corinne the way he had, and the argument that followed was still fresh in my mind. But I had to push it aside, let it go. Does security have the home addresses of everyone who works in the crossfire? They have copies of IDs. Tell me why you're asking. The receptionist here at work is a friend of mine, and she's been out sick all week. I'm worried about her. If you're hoping to head over to her place and check up on her, you should get the address from her. I would, if she'd return my calls. I ran my fingertip around the lip of my coffee mug and stared at the collage of pictures of Gideon and me that decorated my desk. Are you not on speaking terms at the moment? No, we're not fighting or anything. It's just not like her to not get in touch with me, especially when she's calling in sick to work every day. She's a chatty girl, you know? No, he drawled. I have no idea. If it had been any other guy who'd said that, I would think he was being sarcastic. But not Gideon. I didn't think he'd ever really talked with women in any meaningful way. He was too often clueless when interacting with me, as if his social development hadn't quite been well-rounded when it came to dealing with the opposite sex. Then you'll have to take my word for it, Ace. I just... I want to make sure she's all right. My lawyer's standing right here, but I don't have to ask him about the legality of giving you the information you're asking for via the means you've suggested. Call Raul. He'll find her. Really? An image of the dark-haired, dark-eyed security specialist ran through my mind. Is he going to be okay with that? Angel. He's paid to be okay with everything. Oh. I fiddled with my pen. I knew I shouldn't feel uncomfortable using Gideon's resources, but it made me feel as if our relationship were unbalanced in his favor. While I didn't believe he would ever hold that over me, I didn't think he'd see me as equal to him either, and that was really important to me. He had already taken care of issues on his own that I should have been a part of, like Sam Yamara's horrid sex tape of Brett and me, and Nathan. Still, I asked, how do I reach him? I'll text you his number. Okay, thanks. I want either myself, Angus, or Raul with you when you go see her. And that wouldn't be awkward at all. I glanced at Mark's office to make sure my boss didn't need me for anything. I tried not to make personal calls at work but Megumi had been out for four days straight without a single returned call or text the whole time. Don't throw me that chicks before dicks line, Ava. You need to give me something here. I got the subtext. He was worried about me going to San Diego and was letting that issue slide. I had to bend a little somewhere else in return. Okay, okay. If she's not back in the office on Monday, we'll figure out how to handle it. Good. Anything else? No, that's it. My gaze returned to a photo of him and my heart hurt, just a little. The way it always did when I looked at him.